Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound. And um, well, I just thought to take a, a quick video to show you the current projects I'm working on, especially at this late night and my eyes are falling out. Um, so, so you can see, you know, what it takes to really create a really good sounding car. Uh, fuck me, what am, what am I doing at nearly midnight in, in someone's car? I'm mad. So, this current Audi has had uh, an existing install. Uh, the Audi Zambit 1 gave up after many years of use. Um, so we swapped it out. We are not running digital anymore. Um, because the Beat 1 was linked to the Audison Thesis Quattro amplifier running the wideband and the mid bass in the car um, in digital with the Digilink. But, um, well, we put the Zapco in on an analog line out and it sounds just as good, if not better, especially that the DSP can do way, way uh, more. It's way more accurate when it comes to tuning. It has 31 band EQ, fully parametric EQ, what, what I can use anywhere with whatever Q factor on the EQs I want at the right place with the right Q. So it can truly create something very, very special. Um, yeah, I quickly show what the car has. Well, there's not much to see because there's a pair of two inch in factory location. Um, I had a video about this car before, actually too, because I built a, a sub-enclosure for this car before. I'm gonna put the links to the description, so if you wanna see those guys, go to the description and click on the links. Then you will see what happened in this car previously. Um, I think it has Hertz ML 1800, seven inch mid base drivers. Well, I would have to check it because that was installed previously by another installer. However, the doors need heavy, heavy dampening because, um, yeah, they can rattle quite badly. So I will have to get that sorted at some point when we have time for that. Um, I still have to install this little controller for the Zapco DSP, which is going to be there underneath the steering wheel, kind of a bit out of the way. It will be still um, on display, so it will be easy to see and, and reach. But there's just literally no space here on the center console, and I don't want to cut it up. It's you know a pretty expensive car, and the client didn't even want to get rid of the cup holders, which would have been perfect uh, for the controller. And, and you know, one cup holder could have been saved, but I can make it happen without cutting that panel. I can mount the the controller on it in a clever way. Um, and then, yeah, at the moment, I'm testing this beautiful FIO M11, which is actually streaming, streaming to to the processor because it has built-in Bluetooth, which is not a bad thing, not a bad thing to have. And funnily, even the 96K 24-bit tracks play. I don't know what down samples, whether they play down samples or the Bluetooth bigger tint to the DSP handles but it plays it and it plays it really well um, whether YouTube is gonna bloody censor this I'm not sure but let's see Said you really wanna love me, but you can't do that now. Said you really wanna touch me, that you can't do it right now.
yeah, it's, it's pretty good already. I spent a bit of tuning with it a bit more because I've already done the two inch drivers, which took like two and a half hours just to EQ them out, set them up properly. And then I still have to do the mid bass tomorrow, the sub to pull the whole system together, fine tune it. So yeah, easily, you know, six, seven hours goes, just flies away for proper tuning, even on a two way plus sub. Um, but it's, 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 it's worth it, 100% worth it. So this is what's in the trunk of this A8. As you see, that monster amplifier takes all the space up. That was a, available behind the factory panel. Personally, I would have used a different combination, you know, something more space saving. Yes, it's great sounding amp, but in this setup, it doesn't make too much sense to me because um, there was no room for anything else in order to put the factory panel back, which is literally like an inch away from it. So we had to hide the monoblock amplifier underneath that, that you can see in one of the links. Um, I think, yeah, I think I showed that when I installed that amplifier running this 10 inch Helix sub, which does a great job considering it's a tiny little sealed box. Uh, it fills the car nicely. And, and funnily, that was just a post recently. Um, one of the groups on Facebook someone was saying you know that I don't get the punch from my subs that I'm after uh, it must be the box uh, then I try this or try that and I was just like you know most people forget the most important thing the car itself if it, you know this is a bloody punchy sub in this in this box super punchy super tight and accurate but you try to play through a huge trunk like this there's not much going through the parcel shelf is already sealing the trunk very well and it was soundproofed on the top. There's a bit going through behind the amp through the ski hatch hole but technically the boot becomes like another box and then yes it's a sealed box but you play it into another box you end up having like a, a band pass box. So you know don't be surprised if you don't get that punch. If, if you have a long saloon a sealed with a sealed trunk or a big SUV it's not going to happen, so you kind of have to deliver that punch from the front with your mid-bass. As you know, I could put in... Hello, something is happening. So I could put in, you know, 10 of these into this trunk, but the car would... Oh wow, that's moving nicely. This car would fall apart way before then you would get any punch up front. But what it does actually... Oh wow, yeah. Considering it's just a 10 in a tiny little box, it plays down to 21, 2 hertz really well and this is one of the Aya technical tracks and bloody hell it's not even turned up but it's moving nicely so um, yeah system planning is another important thing I'm not saying that this amp is, is, is not sounding good with the current setup but yeah it's not the most practical that's for sure um, but we will see what happens with this build in the future but at the moment at least it's it's sounding very very sweet so this is the DSP behind the amplifier through the ski hatch it's a bit messy yet wiring wise because I'm still doing tests it will be tidied up plus to be fair it will be seen really but yeah you see there's the space that you have for the sub box to to get through from the trunk and once the armrest is also you know turned back up sealing that gap then you don't have much room for bass coming through. So, um, yeah, it's a big, big, big ass car. Little late night session tuning. So what you see there is a pair of two inch wide bands on the dash, an Audi A8, right? There were nights and mornings. After two hours, you can get something like that. Find your way into my bones, my joints. And then everything falls to its own place. Great imaging. Good spectral balance.
rest is not sorted out yet, so I still have to tune the mid bass, the sub, pull everything together um, because at the moment there's just a basic crossover setting on the uh, mid bass. But you know, just to get there, that took more than two and a half hours just on a pair of two inch drivers, and it makes all the difference. It makes a difference between a mediocre sounding system and something that actually sounds pretty stunning. And you don't need super expensive speakers because that, that pair costs, what, 170 quid a pair, I think? Just here, yeah, good install and proper tuning, that's it. So this is the end of this, this phase now. Um, I just have to put the trim panel back in front of the amplifier and the fuse box. And the car is fully, fully functional, spare wheel. Sub box is not in the way. There's literally a few millimeters of clearance, but that's just enough. And then, yeah, let's shut that. Sure, inside. So. So that's where we decided to put the controller. I didn't have to modify anything for that. Um, yeah, it needed a bit of magic to to make that controller stay there. But you know, if the car has to be sold on in the future, nothing was drilled, no cable is visible, and it's easy to access it. Because normally you have your right hand on the steering wheel, then with left hand you can just reach there and turn it up. It's that simple. And yeah, let's open this. If I pause the player, which is streaming now. Hang on. Would you, please? Pause. That's it. Then the radio should take over. And then we have the factory radio. Connected with the DMI. Audison DMI connector, an optical. Yeah, it sounds just like any radio, pretty shit, but at least it's, it's there, it's functional. Plus you have SD card, CD, all that. And you can always use the DAP. At the moment it's streaming. Yeah, people say it's Bluetooth, it's shit, but the source is good at least, so it sounds pretty good. Um, at the moment we don't have wired connection, but that will happen in the future. But maybe the, the player will be changed to something more up to date. But you know, quite simple now. You have separate sub volume up to 24. Presets. That's the base set. And that's the final, there's nothing else on it at the moment. And then you've got the sources, so you can manually select the source as well. So optical is the factory edge unit. And then we have the streaming. Nice and simple. Absolutely simple. So what do we have here? We have this funny track I played in a few cars, which plays down to proper, proper lows. Yeah, that sub is, is really small, but it really does a good job. but things want to fall apart so that's where the DSP is that cover goes back it covers it and then the armrest goes back then <laughs> it covers everything so this is where it is we will see what the next phase is gonna be probably I'll make a playlist for this car as well now and please guys check out the description as I mentioned earlier because then you will see um, links to the sub box enclosure uh, build and also you find another link to when we did the test with the two inch drivers because I modified the grills and it definitely made a big difference then you can see the results how it changed 
the response. Guys, if you like the video, please press the like button and don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully I can I can talk to you very soon.